Mary, you know, last year was so hard for New York, and I feel like a real test for what Robin Hood can do. Can you walk us through like what you guys learned and your partnership with Robin Hood? Absolutely. So thank you for having uh, me today. It's exciting to talk about the partnership that J.P. Morgan and Robin Hood have. J.P. Morgan is the one of the largest private sector employers in New York City. So we've been obviously uh, caring and dedicated to all of New Yorkers for the past two centuries that we've been here. But when Robin Hood was invented 30 years ago, uh, we found a partner that could really help us to multiply the effect of giving back to the community. And as everyone knows, Robin Hood is a very metrics-driven organization, um, which multiplies the money effect uh, based on uh, how they choose the partners and how they give the money back to about a 12 to 1 ratio. So it's a is very, very powerful, and their mission is um, everything from early childhood uh, to e education to jobs and to uh, survival. And so um, we focus you know, greatly on helping Robin Hood, and Robin Hood helps all of us to help the New Yorkers most in need. Yeah. You know, before the pandemic, one in five New Yorkers uh, are living in, were living in poverty. So it's only gotten worse since then. And Robin Hood really was at its finest, you know, as we went through last year. Last year, they were able to, with their relief fund and the ability to move super quickly, deployed $172 million across New York City. Uh, we helped 700 different organizations, community partners. We, we work through others to be able to help give back to the community. That's twice yep. as many community partners as ever before. Um, Mary. It's super important because New York City had twice the job losses that the rest of the country did. So um, so it's been it's been a long slog, but they've done just a fabulous job. Mary, how do you think the nature of that task has changed as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, it's um, ever more so important that uh, that each dollar goes straight to the people in need. You know, a lot of organizations, they have a lot of overhead. One of Robin Hood's um, most important features is that is 100% underwritten all the expenses by the board. Um, the same goes for the conference that we're throwing on June 16th, which JP Morgan underwrites the entire thing. What we're most uh, driven by is making sure that each and every person who lives in New York uh, or who has a nexus to New York can give dollars, whether it's a dollar, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, and it goes straight to those people in need because New York City it's at the heart of everything that's happening in the United States of America. It's been it's been the center of much focus as we've gone through the pandemic. The city is coming back. Uh, you can feel it each and every day. You know, many of us have been here uh, straight through since last year. You think about the Robin Hood uh, people who are working to help. You think about the the branches, the hospitals, the fire, the police, the sanitation. There's a lot of people that have been here all the way through, but everyone else seems to want to be coming back now. Uh, and that makes it feel exciting. And that helps the whole flywheel. That helps helps the flywheel of poverty. Yeah. Uh, when people come back and spend money, that, that's what we need New York City to be back doing. Hey, Mary, what, what can we expect this year in the conference? Since it's virtual, you know, Zoom's great, but it's hard to get that, like, buzz and, and, and really get that conversation going, particularly when everyone's going to be excited about certain key speakers, et cetera. So what can we expect? Yeah, so that's the most exciting part. Normally, uh, this conference uh, is in person and uh, very limited uh, capacity. The fact that we're, we're going to do it for the second year in a row virtually means we can open it up to many more people. It's off the record. It's, you know, it's one of these great things where some of the biggest donors to Robin Hood, as well as the board members, and many of them are involved in investments. And so whether it's the hedge fund community, the private equity community, the real estate community, and so we have yeah. speakers like Paul Tudor Jones, uh, John Griffin, Dina Powell, uh, Barry Sternlich, uh, Larry Robbins, but we also have these longtime donors like David Tepper and Ray Dalio and Stan Druckenmiller, John Fitzpatrick from Soros. We have special guests like Kathy Wood, uh, Ashton Kushner, and we also have a very, very special guest I can't tell you about, but everyone who has Zoom fatigue, this one is worth, this one is worth dialing in for. It's really, it's an investment in you as an investor. Like, just take the time out dial in nine to five it's chocked full it's very well curated uh, and we're really sensitive no. to people's time if they're going to give their money we're going to give them we're going to give them the most for their money okay now i'm really no hints as to who that person is <laughs> you can't i break a little ground here it will be very worth your while oh man okay. we'll 
We'll just leave it there. Look, what do you think they're going to be talking about? The, the hot topic right now seems to be inflation or no inflation. What do you think the big theme this year is going to be? It, it, it's all of that, right? So first of all, it's just dislocations that have been happening ever more so in the past year than, than, than in our memory for the past several years. Uh, and that's exciting for people who are active in the marketplace. You know, the whole trade-off, as you all have been talking about and, and highlighting so well, is the, the great combination of lots of liquidity and little inflation is helping all of us to enjoy these very healthy markets. And the question is, when lots of liquidity turns into little liquidity and little inflation turns into lots of inflation, and that crossover point is what everybody's watching for. And until you hit that crossover point, uh, there continues to be tremendous opportunities. And it's not just here in the U.S. A lot of these speakers will talk about the opportunities that they see everywhere, overseas, emerging markets area, China. Um, and a lot of them will also focus on the, on the less liquid, um, undiscovered parts of the market in the private equity sector, uh, in the direct real estate mm -hmm. investing. Uh, so it, so it's, it, they have a lot that they're going to that they're going to cover. I think it's going to be very exciting. You also mentioned uh, Kathy Wood and Mary. I'd love to just get your take on what your clients are talking about in terms of Bitcoin, crypto. It's like the volatility makes it sexy, but it also might make it more difficult as an asset class. Like, what what are you guys telling your clients? Yeah, I mean, you know, a healthy, vibrant market um, that has lots of extra liquidity uh, can provide bubbles that happen from, from time to time. And so uh, the most important job that we all have as advisors to clients and, and you all, as you, as you help to bring people on the screens to talk about these things, is just to make sure no one is ever over their skis in any one particular area. You know, the old saying of diversification is the answer to every question. It still is today. And so... There's lots of things so that could become new asset classes over time or could not. Uh, and as long as they're done in the right bite size, it, it's, it, it makes for very, very well-balanced portfolios. It's the people that get way to fall in love with any one idea. And then that's, you know, they, they can't see through the, the, the eyes of what they've got. And that's, uh, you know, that's the most important thing that we advise clients on.